Good day, ma'am. Good day, classmates. And my topic is mass, momentum, and energy conservation. At the end of this discussion, we are expected to know the contributions of scientists to our understanding of mass, momentum, and energy conservation. So let us first know, what is mass? So mass, in physics, quantitative measure of inertia a fundamental property to of all matter. It is the effect the resistance that a body of matter offers to a change in its speed or position upon the application of a force. The greater the mass of a body and the smaller the change produced by an applied force. So now, what is mass conservation? The law of conservation of mass our principle of mass conservation implies that mass can either be created nor destroyed, although it may rearrange in space or the uh, entities associated with it may be changed in form. Russian scientist Mikhail Lomonosov formulated the law of mass conservation in 1756 and came to the conclusion that the Plogeston theory is incorrect. The discovery of the law of conservation of mass was made in 1789 by the French scientist Antoine Lavoisier. Others had came up with the idea before, but Lavoisier has first to prove it. The law of conservation of mass states that, in a closed system, including the whole universe, mass can neither be created nor destroyed by chemical or physical changes. In other words, Total mass is always conserved. The cheeky maxim, what goes in, mass comes out, appears to be a literal scientist truism, as, some, as nothing has ever been shown to simply vanish with no physical trace. So here is the example of mass conservation and a further explanation. If we plan to make chocolate milk for our family, then we will add ingredients like milk, sugar and chocolate in a proportionate amount, right? Now what if we have guests at home? We will simply have to double or triple the amount of individual ingredients. Simple, isn't it? It means that for a particular recipe, the proportion of inputs will almost always remain the same. Why are we discussing this along with the concept of atoms? That's because it will help us understand a few important laws related to atoms. The introduction to the concept of atoms was a major breakthrough in the field of chemistry. However, proving the existence of atoms needed many experimental evidences. The hypothesis that matter is formed out of atoms needed experimental evidences. Soon a French chemist called Antoine Lavoisier carried out several experiments to finalize some strong and valid concepts. After remarkable observations and ideologies, we could get the two major laws of chemical combinations. The two laws are law of conservation of mass and law of constant proportions. Let us understand each law in detail. Let's take a simple example. Just imagine we carry out an experiment in which element A and element B react together to give us a compound C. If we keenly observe, we find that atoms of elements A and B do not exist individually in the reaction mixture. They come together to give us the new compound C. Although it seems that atoms of elements A and B are degenerating, it's not the case. In reality, they are combining to give us the compound C. Antoine Lavoisier put forth the law of conservation of mass and do you know what it tells us? It states that mass can neither be created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. He explained this law by saying that matter is formed from the pre-existing matter and the mass of the newly formed matter will be the same as that of the pre-existing matter. We can neither create new matter nor destroy the existing matter. So the chocolate milk that we made in the beginning came from the milk, sugar and chocolate mixed together. Similarly, we could see that compound C is formed only when atoms of elements A and B combine together. So new substances are formed only when pre-existing ones combine in nature. New things cannot be made from nothing. 
the input for any matter that's formed is always the matter that already exists. Now, this was the first law. Do you remember the second law? Yes, it was the law of constant proportions. Now, let us know what is momentum. Momentum is a vector quantity. It has both magnitude and direction. Isaac Newton's second law of motion states that the time rate of change of momentum is equal to the force acting on the particle. Now, what is momentum conservation? Conservation of momentum, general law of physics according to which the quantity called momentum that characterizes motions never changes in an isolated collection of objects. That is, the total momentum of a system remains constant. René Descartes formulated momentum when he was living in Holland. He was looking to describe mathematically how objects move. He began with the idea that motion was a conserved property of the universe. He used collisions to test the idea. The first mathematical expressions was the product of mass and speed. They seemed to work well with uh, elastic collisions but failed utterly in inelastic collisions. A student of his offered an observation and Descartes used it to add a directional aspect to speed. Newton took Descartes' work further and far from it, he, de he developed his law of motions. Add these laws together and it produces the law of conservation of momentum. You have learned before that an external force is required to make an object accelerate. Similarly, if we want to change the momentum of an object, an external force is required. There will be no change in momentum if there is no external force. What do you think happens to the momentum of billiard balls when they collide with another ball? Is there a gain or loss of momentum? If your answer is no, then you are correct. The momentum of the billiard balls is conserved. If the m value and the v value or the mass and velocity remain the same, the momentum value will be constant. The momentum of an object or set of objects or system remains the same if it is left alone. Within such a system, momentum is said to be conserved. Take note class of the law of conservation of momentum. It says that, in a close and isolated system, the total momentum of the objects before and after collision are equal. So lastly, let us know what is energy. The simplest definition of energy is the ability to do work. Energy is how things change and move. It's everywhere around us and takes all sorts of forms. It takes energy to cook food, to drive to school, and to jump in the air. It may exist in potential, kinetic, thermal, electrical, chemical, nuclear, or other various forms. Now, what is energy conservation? Conservation of energy, principle of physics according to which the energy of interacting bodies or particles in a closed system remains constant. The principle of conservation of energy was first formulated by German physician Julius Robert Mayer in 1842. Mayer observed that the sum of all energies in the universe remains constant, regardless of how these energies are transformed from one form to another. In 1807, English chemist Humphrey Davy showed that the total energy of a closed system one that is not affected by outside forces, remains constant over time. Today, the law of conservation of energy is used extensively in many fields, including engineering and economics. It helps us understand how systems work and how to make them more efficient. So here is a further explanation and example of conservation of energy. In today's video, we're going to look at the conservation of energy principle, which is one of the most important ideas in physics. The principle itself is that energy can be transferred usefully, stored, or dissipated, but can never be created or destroyed. So basically, we can't make new energy or destroy it. 
it can only move between different objects and different forms. Now, you don't need to worry about remembering any of these specific examples that we're going to use in today's video. But you do need to understand the concept of conservation of energy and be able to apply it to different scenarios. For example, when you plug your phone into the wall to charge it, electrical energy from the main supply in your house travels along the wire and gets transferred to the chemical energy store in your phone's battery. Then when you use your phone, this chemical energy can be converted back to electrical energy, which flows around the circuit in your phone and powers the different parts, like the screen and the speaker. In the screen, the electrical energy will be converted to light energy so that you can see it. And at the speaker, it will be converted to sound energy. Ideally, Every time that energy is transferred, it would all be transferred usefully into the desired store that you want it to go to. In reality though, some of it is going to be dissipated as wasted energy, which just means to forms other than the one that we intended. This wasted energy is generally in the form of heat, which is why your phone might warm up a bit when it's charging, or when you're using it a lot. But remember that it can be in other forms too, like sound energy. The next thing we need to look at is the idea of open and closed systems. Now in physics, a system is a bit of a weird term, but it's basically just a portion of the physical universe that you've chosen to analyze. And everything outside that system is known as the environment. So in our phone example, the phone could be considered the system and everything else in the universe would be the environment. In this case, we would say that the phone is an open system because energy and matter can freely move between the phone and the environment. For example, if your phone gets hot, it gives out heat energy to the surroundings, such as your skin. On the other hand, if we put your phone in a sealed jar, then our system would be the entire contents of the jar, including the phone and the air within the jar, and would now call it a closed system because energy and matter can't enter or escape. So this time when your phone heats up, the heat energy will be dissipated to the air inside the jar, so it stays within the system. And importantly, this means that the overall energy of a closed system doesn't ever change.